Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So we got another SNS here ready for you. And I think all of you guys are waiting to see this shaper back together and, and back in operation, right? So that's what this weekend's gonna be about. This SNS, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the the final footage of putting the tool head all back together, which is the tool lantern, the, the lock on the side, and uh, uh, at this particular moment, I can't remember the other parts, but uh, we finished getting the tool head back together and getting it back in operation. And then there's gonna be a follow-up video after this SNS that's gonna be showing some test cuts on the machine, okay? So I've been excited to get to this point and share it with you. And you know what, I'll just tell you, so far everything's working out pretty good, okay? But um, you guys can watch the footage and hopefully you'll enjoy it. I've already had a couple jobs lined up for the shaper. I've, I've got one and I've already completed it. And I'm waiting on another one. I'm waiting on some material to come in and I want to bring it in and, and do some practice cuts over there on the shaper with it. All right. And I've also started, for all you guys that follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. I've already started the new welding cart project, the ZT Fab welding cart. So that's going to be another series that I'm going to be coming out with real soon using the new Everlast TIG welder that I got, the uh, Power TIG 200 DV. So that's some upcoming stuff that I'm working on in the shop now as well. So I've got a few videos ready for you that I'm excited to share. So just be on the lookout for some more content, all right? And I've got a, a couple of gifts that have come in the shop from some different viewers and another YouTube contributor. So I want to share those with you real quick and get to those. And after that, we'll jump over there and we'll start working on the shaper again, okay? I hope you guys enjoy this weekend's videos. I want to give a big thanks to my friend Mr. Pete on YouTube. Most all of you guys know who Mr. Pete is, and I'll have a card there for him. Mr. Pete sent me these three textbooks right here the other day, and I was just excited to open this because I didn't expect them from, uh, from Mr. Pete. I didn't expect them to come. But these are some of my favorite types of books. I've shared some of my other books that I've had with you guys, and these are very similar type of textbooks. You know, it's the style that you would find in a, I guess back in high school days or college days, you know. So this one is very similar to the one, I have one called Technology of Machine Tools. This is called Machine Tool Technology, but it's very, very similar book. This is, uh, these books go into all of the aspects of, ma of manual machining and bench work and measuring all that kind of stuff there's another one here called metal work this is very similar to machine tool technology but it's got other things in there as well like welding right here it shows a guy welding and then, then there's a third book here called exploring metal working and it has information in it that the other books doesn't have so all really really great books man i just I love going through these old textbooks and looking at the pictures and seeing all of the old school ways and all of the diagrams in these in these books just look awesome. There's a lot of good info. Look, I mean, you got a you got a chapter right here on blacksmithing right here. Look at tools and hand forging. We'll just take a a quick peek through here. Here's a welding section right here. So many good chapters, fasteners, threads. So there, there was a section on filing, sawing, and bench work right there. So I don't exactly have a book like this that's got all those different uh, subjects in one book right there. But uh, I wanted to share this one real quick too. So again, this is very similar to technology of machine tools. And I wanted to, I've got the... Uh, the page marked right there and uh, the uh, letter from from Lyle Mr. Pete and this is a pretty famous shaper picture that gets passed around the internet quite a bit look at that heavy cut right there now it doesn't say it here in this book but I have other people that say that Cincinnati claims that's a two inch depth of cut on that block right there uh, you know whether it is I, I really don't know but it is definitely a high depth of cut and then here is another example of cutting an internal keyway on a shaper. 
So that's a, that's a really good example of one of the good uses for a shaper is cutting internal keyways or internal shapes, which is something that I plan to get to very soon. All right, I wanted to share, share this page as well. And I thought this was interesting. So there is my tool holder that I used that came with the shaper, right? And here is an actual picture and a diagram showing the position of the tool flipped around to the back side. Now I had a lot of guys mention that whenever I was having trouble the first video making some cuts and they suggested flipping it around. My other book does not show that tool like that. So I found that really interesting to actually see this in the textbook right there. Cutting stroke position for heavy cuts on the back right there. That's really cool. And then there's an example of some internal shaping using the bar holder and a bar sticking out, okay? All right, so just really good stuff in these textbooks. I absolutely love these books right here. And this book right here goes, this is all machining. And so it covers every machine in the shop. There's a section on lays, mills, grinders, shapers, and everything in between. But you see all the, the diagrams and the pictures. And another great thing about these books is that you learn what tools are guys that are trying to figure out what different tooling is that they come across and you know they're not quite sure man it shows it in these books right here there's a nice contouring bandsaw right there the power hacksaw look at that a chapter on the power hacksaw that's pretty cool the section on threading and then you're getting into uh, some inspection work here Hold downs, that's something that I'd like to share on video is the hold downs. Nobody ever shows that. All the old school tools, stuff that I have that you know, you, you see it in these, in these books right here. So anyway, Mr. Pete, thank you very much for the, uh, for the books right here. I really appreciate it and they're gonna be enjoyed. He, he had said in his letter right here, um, throw away what you don't want. <laughs> I'm definitely not throwing any of, these, any of these books away. You know, one of these days, these are gonna be passed out of my hands into somebody else's. So again, thank you, thank you very much. I wanted to give a thanks to my viewer, Dennis Anzel, he's from Bethpage, New York. And he sent this really cool box full of uh, just different goodies, random stuff that he wanted to give me. And uh, I want to point out the box right here. He, he made up this box to fit in a large flat rate USPS box right here. And this is a great way to ship heavy items, tooling, anything sharp, stuff that gets banged around in a, in a box. Uh, you know, a lot of guys complain when they get a package that it's busted open. Uh, they're missing pieces. Sometimes they deliver an empty box. So I know it takes extra effort and time to do that, but um, I know I certainly appreciate whenever guys take the extra effort to box up things like this, you know, whenever they send gifts. So anyways, he just got a bunch of different random stuff that he come across that he wanted me to have. A really nice uh, assortment of center drills right there. That's always great to have nice fresh center drills. And uh, we got some long, we got some pulley taps, some taper shank drills. Look at this uh, little bitty three jaw chuck right there. Definitely not A-bomb size, that's pretty cool. Uh, we got a, a hex die in there, some little valve. There's some, he had some blocks of steel in here too, so this is all mystery metal. This was one of the blocks of steel that he had right there in the middle. All right, and then this is a really interesting guy right here. So, so I believe what this is is an edge finder, uh, also considered a chair edge finder just because it looks like a chair, but something that you can put on the corner of a, of a workpiece that maybe uh, I'm trying to remember, I, I actually have not ever used one of these before, but there's, but there's certain times where you're trying to find an edge and you can't exactly get to that edge right there. So you put that and then you, you work off of these uh, sides right there. Okay, so Tom Lipton over at Ox Tools has uh, shown videos of, of using these right here. So that'd be a, a great tool for the toolbox right there. Uh, some taper shank drills. There's some silver demi drills with uh, a ground for like plastic in there. This is some new old stock, brown and sharp. Uh, this is some of the hardened tool steel right here. 
different sizes. All right, and then this is a cool guy right here as well. This is a brand new Armstrong a T2S, which is the size that I always use. It takes a 3 8 square tool bit, brand new, never been used before with the wrench. And, I, and this is cool too. Down inside here, I love these, these old catalogs. It's, it's got the book here from Armstrong that's got a, you know, it's like a little catalog with all of their tools in there. It's just neat seeing this kind of stuff. And this is a great way to learn about, you know, existing tools. So that's pretty neat to be able to see all the, you know, and I, a lot of these, you know, I have this kind of stuff like that board bar holder. I got one of those. I got one, a viewer sent me a, one of these right here, spring threading tool. So good way to learn more about what they offered and stuff that's existing out there that you may not have ever seen before. There's some of the shaper tooling that I was talking about before right there. All right. So uh, Dennis, thank you very much for the, uh, for the tooling package. I, I really appreciate it, man. And good job on the packaging. All right. It's the next day and we're going to get back on the rest of our parts and try to get the shaper tool head finished up. I believe what I've decided to do is uh, at right now is to not do the uh, the tool blackening on this. The reason why I had brought it up on possibly doing this is because I think this was originally done that way, or the black uh, black steam oxide finish. I'm not sure because you see the back end of it sort of has that blackish look to it. So I think for now I'm just going to go ahead and clean it up and polish it. And we might do the tool blackening on some other stuff. Like, for example, this wrench right here that I've already cleaned up. This is a wrench that came with the shaper. I think this might be a good candidate to do the tool blackening. Because, you know, it will, it will eventually try to flash rust again, you know. But we might try that. And then another good example would be, you know, these tap wrenches like this. This is a Greenfield tap and die number six. And whenever I got this, it was completely rusted. So I soaked it in a vapor rust, you know, to get rid of the rust and then just kind of hand buffed it a little bit. So we might play around with our tool blackening since I, I've actually never done it before with some things like this right here. All right. So for now, we're just going to polish on that. And I want to bring up a couple other things. So there was a lot of there was a lot of guys that were commenting on my file and which was to be expected. I knew it was going to happen. And uh, a lot of guys were getting disagreeing with the way that I was filing so there's a couple ways that you file one is a straight file like that all right and then the other style is draw filing which is side to side like that which is what you've already seen me do so there's a few people that thought that the way I was draw filing is incorrect that I'm ruining the file draw filing is a technique and it's perfectly fine. It works great. Okay, that side to side motion on a mill smooth file is going to create a nice flat uniform cut there for you. That if that if that bothers you, then you just need to look away and get over it is what I got to say. Because I ain't going to stop doing it because a couple guys think I'm filing wrong. Now the other thing that they say is, oh well, you're not supposed to drag the file back on the back cut. It's obvious that's, yes, that's how you, you're supposed to use a file, is a forward cut. All right, but when you're filing, not every time are you filing, are you wanting to pick up and bring back. You want to keep the file flat on the surface that you're filing and bring it back. That little bit of dragging that you're doing on that backstroke right there is not damaging that file. I don't care what you have to say about that. Now, if I'm pushing hard and dragging it back, you might start dulling that cutting edge. But when you're filing, it's the same thing as using a hacksaw. How many of you use a hacksaw, and every time you make a cut forward, you pick it up and then start your next cut? I've never seen anybody do that. It's just like that. So on the backstroke of forward filing, just because I'm dragging it back doesn't mean I'm trying to cut it. All right, but what I want to say is that that's my technique of filing, and I'm going to stick to what I know and what I like to do. All righty, and that's all I want to say about filing, okay?
So what we're going to do is uh, this uh, tool lantern right here, I'm going to clean up all of the roughness there. It just doesn't make any sense why this thing was hit so many times with a hammer, man. It just really bugs me. It's just like the rest of it. But I'm going to clean up all the high spots. We've got real sharp burrs. Let me just show you. So that looks like it probably hit something at one point in its life. You can see where it's been rolled up. That's where I had to grind it. So I want to slick all this down. You can see hot spots right there. And then we'll uh, we'll buff it with my um, the Scotch Bright wheel over there, and we'll just get it looking nice and shiny. Okay. That right there is what bothers people. Anyways, it's a good day in the neighborhood. Weather's great. I got the doors open, and we are working on the shaper. And I'm hoping later on today we're going to get this thing running again. What I like to do on these these parts is since there's a little bit of rusting down in the pits, you know, the hammer marks, I like to wire brush it to, to remove any of the surface oxidation and get those out and then and then do the final polishing. It just make it all look uniform, you know, wire brushed. And I think it does a better job once you go to the polishing phase of it. That's going to look good. So there's the screw that goes to the lantern and what I'm going to do is I'm going to file those first couple of threads. You can see that they're kind of mashed over there just a little bit and I'm just going to use a three corner file to show you that. But I think what I'd like to do is go to the lathe and put this in a collet. This is a one inch thread and at least put a nice face across the end right there. It's just slightly radius from all the years of uh, you know screwing down and pressing on it. So we'll make us a nice face on that again. So we're going to put it here in the vise and just go ahead and use our three-quarter file. Matter of fact, this is one I got at Moultrie in the, the file handle. And this works great for thread repair as a three-corner file. That's a brand new sharp file and it's doing good. We'll just give the, the hex in there a nice little polish again. I, I did this before a while back, but we're going to do it again. I wanted to see about how hard this screw was. Uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show these hardness tester files that I picked up. Got these some time back from uh, KVC Tools. And it's just a very uh, simple and uh, inexpensive way to have something on hand to kind of check hardness of something. And all they are is files, and these files are, are heat treated to a different Rockwell. These are measured in ro uh, Rockwell hardness, by the way. So they start at 40. 
and they go all the way up to 65, and it, and it puts you in a general range of a hardness of, a, of an item. So, you know, you can start with a, with a 40, and it's just sliding across it. So the, the, the idea is once you get one that actually cuts the metal, then you're going to be in that range between this file and the previous file right there. So a 40 doesn't cut it. 45 doesn't cut it. And this is a 50. 50 don't cut it. And that doesn't seem like it's cutting it either. That's a 55. So let's go to a 60. All right, now a 60 is cutting it. You kind of hear the difference there. That's the difference between something harder. It actually makes a cut where if you get this 40, it just slides. It just slides across it. So that means that we're going to be between 55 and 60 Rockwell hardness on it. So that's, that's pretty tough right there, which is to be expected on something like this. So I'm, I've got some Seco TP3500 carbide inserts, and I think I'll try one of those and see if we can see if that'll handle machine in that face right there. If not, I've got some other ones hidden away we can try too. All right, so we'll use our one inch hard inch collet and just stick it through the back like so. So I've already got this this insert mounted up. That's a Seco TP3500. Let's see what that does. Let's see if it tries to cut it or if it burns the tip up. Seems to have cut it just fine. That's great. I picked up a pack of those off eBay a while back for uh, not very much money. Yeah, they did pretty good. Let's go ahead and take one more little pass. We might go ahead and straighten up the, uh, the turned area of it as well. I'm just kind of hand working this. I think that's just what we had in order right there. A little bit less. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and clean that face completely up right there. I don't want to leave that. I'm going to. We're going to try a little bit faster here. That was 5,000, so it looks like that got it just right. There. All right, we'll, uh, we'll use this tool right here and just break the corner. Just like so. All right, doesn't that look better? Should provide a better clamping area on the face and it looks good too. All right, we'll go ahead and get this thing installed. So I'm gonna raise that up. And there's our lantern. And then our screw. 
screw. And for any of you guys that are watching this that are uh, new to the channel, here I'll show you what that does. We always have some new folks watching. So this is the actual tool right here. There's the cutting tool. So this is going to go in just like this. And, and that you tighten this screw up right there and that's what holds your cutting tool. Man, that's looking good. I'm really liking it. Almost done. So we've got the lock right here. I'm going to go and just get it cleaned up. We're going to buff it and get rid of all the all the pecker marks all over it and then just reinstall it. It's it's a real simple deal. It really that's all that holds it in. It just pushes in, you know, and you just lock it in whenever you use it. So we'll get this cleaned up real quick so that it looks good like the rest of it. And we'll put put it on there. I've done some more hand filing on this piece here get rid of all the rolled edges there and I'm just going to brighten it up and polish all the edges here on the on the scotch bright wheel the best I can make it look more presentable Okay, there it is. Cleaned up looking better. Just push it in that hole. And there's the lock. There's the cam plate that I got from Tim off the 24 inch model. I'm going to give it all a wire brush to get rid of all the paint. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to polish up the uh, machine surfaces to make it look good. But uh, it's just going to be bare metal. I'm going to use my grinder with a wire wheel to get rid of the paint. Okay, the last couple pieces of the puzzle. So there is the, the cam plate all cleaned up. And then this is the rail that it mounts to right there. I did a little bit of scotch brighting on that too. You've got several tap holes along here that you can put this thing on. It goes on there just like that. This is the original thumb screw with the part number still in it. I had plans on making one, but I really like the fact that this was made by G&E and it's got a part number in it. So I polished it up just a little bit and you just line the cam plate up wherever you need according to where the stroke is and you just screw this thing in and tighten it up just like that and that's it. So whenever you actually don't need this for any kind of power down feed you can simply remove it from the machine but what G&E recommends is that you take it off take it off real quick 
what GNE recommends, what I meant to say was that put it all the way to the back, put it back back here, and that's probably a better idea so that it just stays with the machine. You know, it's not a uh, it's not two loose parts floating around the shop. So this is where you should keep it on the back of the machine. So that's going to be it for the uh, refurb on the tool head and this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some oil on the ways. We're going to get it turned on, let the lubrication system work, and we'll we'll start moving this thing again. And I want to check out the the cam action on the uh, down feed. I think it's ready to roll. Been letting it run in for about 10 minutes now. Getting all of our oil up to the site oilers. Let's go ahead and start stroking it now. I'm going to reduce that. We got the stroke just set at a random place and reduced it to a 12 inch and then brought the ram back. So we'll probably use probably this bolt right here. I'm gonna try to get it back. Alright, that looks like the end of the stroke right about there. I'm gonna test this first, make sure that this is the right height here. That looks good. Uh, yep, that was good right there. So, go ahead and mount it up right there where it's at. Perfect move the camera and I'll show you. I got a set of four thousandths on the dial right here. Yeah, it moved two graduations on the dial there. Eight thousandths. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, man. I've been I've been waiting to see this for ever since I got the thing. Very cool. Let's make it move a little bit more. It's twenty thousandths.
Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a happy customer, and I'm really, really happy to see this finally go back together. Um, I'm happy with the outcome. I think it's uh, visually, it looks great, and I, I think we did make a couple improvements on it, uh, helping to eliminate our in play and our backlash there, and uh, I think we tightened up the, the clapper a few thousandths anyway, and it just looks great. We got our auto down feed working. I'm just, just, just a great day, you know. So what I want to do now is go ahead and get some material and get our tools set back up and try some more cutting. Uh, I want to try a couple things. I'm going to try another heavy cut. I'm going to make a modification on my tool grind. And I also want to make a vertical cut using the auto down feed. What we'll probably do is mount a piece of stock in the vise and come over onto the side and make a, a vertical side cut on that, okay? That would be a good use for something like this. So let's get going. 